everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, I thought I'd finished doing ATCs but then I got up this morning and I thought no I've got a burning desire to do something. Um, this is not it, this is just um, my other daughter. One of my daughters bought me some crafting things. My other daughter who lives in Cornwall has um, sent, she sent me some flowers for Mother's Day and the box ca they came in was this lovely pat it got this lovely pattern on it it's not all of it like that but I have it's just cardboard but I have rescued parts of it and I'm thinking that that'll do as a good background for some ATCs as well so look out for some of those in the future but I just thought I'd show you what I'd rescued right now I've got two pieces of um, mixed media card here and I have in my head to make some ATCs and then I might do something with those ATCs so this is I'm going to do them really simply now this mat is still filthy I'm not cleaning it I'm, my plan was yesterday to get up and clean up my um, whole craft area but um, Oh, well, I can't go into details, but some things went down yesterday and uh, I didn't get around to doing that. And this morning I don't feel like doing that. So I'm just going to have a bit of a play and then maybe tomorrow or a day I might think of uh, tidying up a bit. I, mean, I think while I'm sitting in squalor, I might as well use the things around me and uh, make some ATCs. Now, I think what I will do... I've got some baby wipes here and I'm just going to give this a bit of a, it's not going to get rid of the glue and the heavy duty stuff, I'll need to give that a better clean up, but I'll just get rid of any of the um, like colour that's going to come off just so that I don't make, well so I don't make mud, but I am going to try and make some mud. I want to make a greeny-ish background but I don't want it to be too bright I am going to use this beautiful twisted um, citron which I haven't used yet but that came from Mel thank you Mel so much lovely Woohoo! and I do want a bit of vintage photo but I don't know whether or not to put it in just go for it let's just see what happens with that Where's my spray? And I could do with a paintbrush, I think. Maybe that one. It's quite a large area to cover, so I might just give it a bit of a helping hand to mix around a bit. I can feel all the glue underneath. Never mind. Let's press on. I could have done this in layers, but I was trying to be quick. That's not enough water. Or actually, more likely the paper is quite thirsty because it's like a water colour type paper. It's quite possibly, that's a bit better. That's sort of what I wanted, but maybe... Oops, she says, sticking fingers. It's all gone a bit one colour. Never mind, we'll dry that and we'll add some stuff to it. Right, don't really want all those ripples in it, but... Um, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that as well, even though I don't want... Too much green on there. Right, that will do. Right, let me dry that and and then I'll be back. Right, here's where we're at. We've got some quite interesting um sort of veining going on there right um, I'm just going to do some layers I think so I'm just going to put a little bit of vintage photo down I 
probably going to put plenty of water because I don't really want that to be a predominant colour, she says. And these will probably all interact with each other anyway. Okay, that will do for that. Let me dry again. Right, I'm enjoying this. This is looking looking quite good. I think I might go in with some. Um, what have I got? I've got some Lucky Clover, just in um, distress ink. I don't know what that will be like, but I'm going to give that a little whirl. Might might not like it. I'll just put it in a couple of places and then. Um, Okay, not too shabby. I don't know how far to take this. I'm, I'm trying to think uh, of my background. I actually quite like this green and I think I'm going to go in with some something else quite dark. So let me dry it and then I'll try one more colour. Yeah, that's looking quite, quite interesting as a background. I might just add... I'm going to try some. This is shabby shutters. I don't know if it'll do a lot. And this is only the ink, not oxide, because that's all I've got it in. Um, don't know what that will do, if anything. Let's have a look. It adds a little sort of of a brighter green. there and okay it's not it's not done a huge amount has it maybe we could my darkest greeny oxide is the uh, mode lawn maybe Maybe we can add a bit more um, brown, um, what do you call it, vintage photo to it. Don't really know what I'm looking for. Just something with a little bit more, sort of like a darker green. a little um, no don't do that yeah, like a dirtier green perhaps Well, I think I'm going to leave that as it is. Um, am I going to use that? I might use a bit of that. I'm going to just clean that part and hope I don't stick that everywhere. I might just leave that to dry au naturel. No, I won't. No, I won't. I'm going to dry it with my heat tool. One sec. All right, that's what it looks like. Go back in with this. I thought I'd be able to use that spray thing, but I know I could spray from my bottle as well, but so well that will do with some larger drops and then we'll just spray mist with that and I'm just going to let the oxides react with the water for a minute and then we will mop it up and see what happens have a quick sip of tea while I'm waiting I'm going to have to finish that in a second because it's getting cold. Right, let's see what happens with this. Just 
just roll that over. Has it done anything? Yes, you can see you can see where the um, large drops were, but not where the misting went. I don't think. Let's just have another spray or splatter. I won't leave it too long because there's some quite large drips on there. That's better. Just adds a little something can see all that to the background right that's going to be a background so I'm going to put that to one side um, now I've got one over here which is it's got a little bit of green in it which is kind of what I want but I'm going to put some I'm going picked raspberry and that's not an oxide although I really ought to have it in an oxide because I love that one. Oh, I do have seedless preserves which is similar not quite Right, so I'm just going to pop a little of the vintage photo in that, I think. And I think it will need some more water. We can always add, but it's hard to take away. Well, that's quite nice, but it's gone a bit dendritic. I do without those. Right, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm going to do that again. More of the picked raspberry, plenty of water, a little of the uh, vintage photo. All right, let me just finish that tea up before it goes cold. Yay, I finished a cup. Woohoo! Right, I'm going to try and dip in the corners that didn't have much going on. Although, actually, it's not that important that I fill the whole sheet because I'm only going to die cut from this one. Let's dry that. In fact, I'll clean all of that up a bit because that's a little bit messy. Right, I'm going to dry that and then I'll see where we're at. Right, that's what it looks like. It's quite pretty. I think I want some more layers in it, so I'm going to try some. I picked out the um, seedless preserves and I don't know if I want to go down that route or not. And I've got the abandoned coral, which will probably sit quite nicely on there. And I think I will just add some of the abandoned coral. Let's just activate it. Don't know what that is, but I don't like it. There we go. keen on the patterns we're getting there. I think I might have to put some more green back into here or brown. Um, I don't know. I liked the green. I think I might add a little bit more greeny brown but I'm going to dry this first obviously. Be back in a sec. Not really sure if that added much or not to be honest but I am going to do the same as I did before, I think. What did I do? Mowed lawn and a bit of... I uh, don't want too much. A little bit of vintage photo. Um, don't know what I'm doing with this. raspberry in to 
there and maybe we'll have an area of picked raspberry and vintage photo there right we're going in oh that's a bit of a bit of a brown a bit of a dirty brown there but hopefully it's not going to ruin anything I quite like that hopefully it will work for my plan right might just try something so that's the picked raspberry going down there where's that brush gone don't really know why I'm splattering it but I am especially while it's a bit, little bit damp that's the picked raspberry I'm just going to add a bit of the vintage photo don't want to do it with a bit of that in there, a little bit of the pink in there. I don't think I've got enough. Right, this is mainly just a bit of the vintage photo watered down. There's a tiny amount of the picked raspberry going in there as well. I think instead of doing um, splashes of water, I'm doing splashes of colour on this one. is terrible anyway let's let's do I need to roll that I might just pick up some of that that's better it's a little bit more muted now yes that's exactly what I wanted right so I've got these two sheets here this one I'm going to cut into ATC backgrounds and this one I'm going to die cut with my Tim Holtz flowers and I will be back. Right, sorry for I was a bit quiet the last little while. I forgot to put my microphone back on, so I might have been a bit distant. Right, those are my backgrounds. I've cut those to two and a half by three and a half and I'm going to ink around the edges in a mo. I think and I've cut some Amazon packaging as well so there's a reason why I'm going to give them a bit of stability with um, with a bit of packaging on the back now the reason I'm going to do this is I'm, I'm these are going to be ATCs but they're ATCs I'm going to make them into cards so I'm going to show you that you can when you've got your ATCs if you're not in a challenge or something and you want to rustle up a quick card you can easily, just notice there's some little holes in there, you can easily rustle them in, up uh, into some cards. And it's a really easy way of using up, you know, you, can, you don't have to use the same sort of backgrounds, you can use a piece of 12 by 12 or something like that, but it's just an easy way of um, making some cards. And that's what I was planning to do. So, uh, what do I want to put around the outside? I want to darken those up a little bit. I think, I think, I think. I don't want to use a vintage photo because I think it will be too dark or too orange, even though I've used that in there. I'm going to just go in with the old frayed burlap, I think. Not too much, but just to get rid of the 
white edges where it's been cut. And you don't have to use, you know, you don't have to do the same as me. I'm just giving you an idea. I just fancy doing these. I woke up this morning and thought, yeah, I'm going to make a few cards because you can never have too many cards for, you know, sending off with ATCs and things like that. And I do like, you know, I say I'm not a card maker. I don't think I am a card maker. I'm not into um, like the card kits and hunky dory and I don't really, I'm saying words I don't even know. So don't. You know, I don't, I don't really, I don't really do that kind of thing. But I like, I do, I never buy cards if I can, uh, can avoid it. I always make my own cards, but I wouldn't call myself a card maker. I just like, um, you know, making things into cards. Maybe it's a better sending a bit of artwork or something like that. Right, those I like. Now, I don't know if I want to ink around the edges of those either. Might try that with one and see what we, so I don't really want, I don't really know how to go around the edges without compromising the whole flower. Has that done anything? Where's the other one that wasn't inked? Careful. Yes, I think it does make a difference. Right, I guess I'll be doing that then. Inking flowers. This one's got a slightly skinnier stem and I think that's because that's the one that went in the die cut machine twice. And perhaps it wasn't quite aligned, but if I glue it carefully, it should be fine. So I'm just using my blending tool and going around the edge. I don't know what if, whether or not you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying not to get ink everywhere. There. Oops. Maybe not be quite so heavy handed, she says. I'm not doing a fantastic job. I'm just a hint of ink, I think. So I don't want to ruin anything. And they're quite pretty as they are. And also some of these little fronds are a little bit delicate. I don't really want to be ripping them off. But I think it just it might just help them stand out a little bit on the card. more of these are going to be a struggle. Or not. Just hold the leaves down and hope for the best. There we go. Right, that is they. I need, where's my baby wipe? Get rid of that extra dye there. It's looking quite interesting. I shall save that one probably. Use it for something. Well, she says that until I get a ton of glue everywhere and start uh, using that. Now, where is my baby glue? So I did sort out my glues yesterday. Hang on, there it is. Let's get old baby glue out. And my contraption, which I will show you, is a glass uh, herb jar with a piece of card and some elastic bands and a hole so that I can keep it upright because it's just a slight struggle to get the um, glue to come out each time. So I keep it upright so that it can um, 
just keep dribbling. It doesn't come out actually, but in case it did, it just saves a tiny amount of time because I think because this glue is quite thick in this needle point glue bottle. Probably not quite designed for it, but it works. But I want, I want my glue when I want it. I haven't got the patience to wait for it to finish or to start coming out the end of the tube. I don't know how much I need there. So let's pop that on there. And snip its little stem off. Yeah, that's quite pretty. So I'm just going to be doing that. Deciding which way up I want the background and where I want the flower. And I may put some words on these, I don't know. We shall see. So I'm just gluing. If I'm quiet, it's because I'm trying to concentrate. Let's put that on there. I think we'll go like that. Oh, or like that. There we go. That's quite a bright morning. Doesn't look like uh, it doesn't look too too bad actually. It's not sunny, but it's not dull either, which makes a change. Our eldest daughter went back to London yesterday. She's been with us for three months. I don't know before Christmas. She came before lockdown. And. Um, Oh, it's been great. It has been great having her here, but um, she wants to uh, to go back and sort her flat out. She lives right in the centre of London, right in the city centre, um, because that's where she was working. But now all work is remote and the company has decided that they don't need to... Um, You know, people don't need to go in the office. There's no reason for her to be paying out for a city centre flat or apartment when she could move anywhere in the country and um, work remotely. So, you know, and obviously I'd love her to stay at home, but she's got to have her own life and do things. So she's moving in with a friend which is nice, I'm pleased because, you know, that's why we wanted her to come back because we didn't want her to be in um, lockdown in the centre of London all on her own. So, um, you know, that would be, that would be great to have some company. And she still, she loves playing online games. So we do play games online together. And so does my youngest daughter when she's around, but she's at uni, so. She's got uh, she's got other friends around, so right. This one's a little bit weak at one point. I'll just stick some glue on. I don't know whether or not that's going to be showing or not, but I'll do that. I don't know how much I put on here, so I'm just going to stick a little bit more glue here in case this was on the. Yeah, I've left a tiny, tiny hole in there, but I don't think it'll hurt. So yes, yeah, just the two of us again now. But you know, also pleased that my daughter is. You know. She's getting her life sorted and 
it's important that you, you know, you don't let this last year ruin your future. So yeah, I'm very pleased that she's got a friend that she's moved. I hope it works out, but I've got a friend to move in with and they've bought, they've, because of, um, obviously my daughter's used to paying huge amounts of rent in uh, London. She's, they've got a bigger place in, I think they're going to Manchester. So that they've got, um, spare bedrooms that they can use as hobby rooms and things like that. They've got it all sorted. I think that's a great idea. Gives them some space to, you know, hang out and do things. And also if you're working from home all the time, it's nice to have somebody else around, you know, to chat to every now and again. All right, I'm still gluing. And the sun has come out. It looks pretty good out there. I need to get out of the garden. The front garden's atrocious. Well, the back garden's even worse, but um, nobody sees that except the window cleaners. So, and us, of course. But we don't. Uh, we don't do it. It's like uh, we've got a, a massive conservatory at the back of the house, which is lovely. But it's so cold in the winter; it just never gets used. And all that happens in the winter is we dump things in there that need, you know, attention, like tons of cardboard that needs to go to the recycling centre and things like that. And then it comes to spring and we'll have a blitz, clean it all up. And then we'll spend the summer sitting out there because it's ever so lovely out there in the summer. And then um, come autumn when it gets chilly again, we don't tend to go out. So the back garden, I'll do usually sort of May time, I just, and I only have pots and things, things in pots which are easy to look after because, because nobody goes in the garden but me. Um, my husband has terrible, um, uh, hay fever. And so basically outdoors is not good for him any time May onwards. So it's not one for sitting out in the garden. And I'll sit, I, I like sitting and crafting out there, but I'm not one for just sitting and doing nothing either. So, you know, my mum and dad, they're, they're really keen gardeners. And I think, I think I let them down on that front. But it doesn't seem, you know, what's the point in sorting out a garden if no one's going to enjoy it? But to me... Oh, do you know what? I've cut out more, of course I have, I've cut out more shapes than I've got um, cards for. Oh well. I could put two on, I wonder what I could do. Mm, no, I think I prefer just the one. It's one of those nice, oh, I'm going to just stick with that, stop, stop analysing, just glue it on. This is why my board gets gluey. Um. Right, that will do for those. Don't think that's going to stay on, so it can come off. Right. Did anybody see where I put my pin? There it is. Now I know I should be using the pin from Christine. But I've got it in another bottle at the moment. Right, that die cut can stay and be there. Right, let me have a bit of a tidy up and then I will come back and tell you what I'm doing. Right, I'm trying to show you what I'm looking at at the moment. I'm trying to work out what sort of mats and things I want on my cards and how I want them to look. I think I'm going to do them on craft card, not white card. So I'm just looking at the bottom corner here and I'm lining up some black and then some 
and then putting my thing on the top and looking at this and how whether or not I like the look of that and then I'm swapping out the black now and popping in the white and putting this on top and interestingly I don't know what to do I, I did this first and I thought yes and I tried the black I didn't like it now this time I've tried the black first and then put the white on I think I'm going to stick with the white actually I think that's what I'm going to do so what I will do is go and cut some white card and my and my card bases and I'll come back and I'll come back with the measurements um, right I've got to uh, add a little bit of video in here um, my memory card must have filled up and it's although it recorded a large portion of my um, next part of the video it got rid of the important bit which was the measurements and that was the bit at the beginning um, so what I've done is usually um, I'm just looking now for an ATC to talk to you with right, let's, let's imagine okay this is sort of like an ATC if that was the ATC or the or the the picture that I was going to put on a card, I would probably leave about an eighth of an inch all the way around on a mat, and then have another eighth of the inch around on a card. Um, but if you do that, you cannot get four card bases from one piece of A4. You can only get two, and that seemed a bit wasteful because if I was making nine of them, like I am. Um, I would need five pieces of A4 card to make them and I thought it was a bit of a waste. So what I've done is trimmed things down a little bit. I haven't touched the ATCs. The ATCs are still two and a half inches by three and a half inches. But what I've done is the mat that this is going to sit on here is smaller than I would normally do. This is going to be two and five eighths inches by three and five eighths inches. And then that will fit, it does fit on, you're not going to see very well because I've picked white on white, but I don't think I've got anything else the right size to show you. But believe me, there's like a tiny slither all the way around and the same again around on the card. But if you do it this way, and it's up to you how you do, you don't even have to do it obviously. If you were making cards with ATCs, that's all I'm saying, um, and try not to use up tons of resources, and if you use these measurements, which I will show you, you will be able to get four of these card bases out of one piece of A4. And you'll be able to get nine of those mats out of a piece of A4, the same way as you can get nine ATCs from a piece of A4. So let me show you what I've done. This is for the mat, whatever colour you're using. It's two and five eighths inches. You need to, you need to cut it this way. If you do it the other way, you, like same way as when you make ATCs, if you do, instead of doing it at two and five eighths, but you do it at three and five eighths, you will only get eight ATCs, you will not get nine. So to get the full nine on one sheet, you need to cut it this way. So along the long edge at two and five eighths, two and five eighths like that, and then three and five eighths and three and five eighths. And that's how you'll get nine mats you'll get nine atcs if you do two and a half by three and a half in the same way and these are just very very slightly larger okay so that's the the white mat that i've used at the back there and then i've used um craft card stock and you want to cut these in this way and this way you will get four whole backs from one piece of a4 which seems sensible so you're cutting it at three and three quarters or three and six eighths however you measure it hang on a minute i'm gonna sneeze excuse me so you need to cut it at three and three quarters and three and three quarters and then this way five and a half and five and a half and that way you will get um, just this little bit of waste around the edge, but you'll get four car backs from one piece of A4, which seems better than, you know, wasting. But, you know, it's up to you. If you want to make a bigger card, make a bigger card. I'm just trying to sort of show you a way, if you'd made loads and loads of ATCs, of how to um, make some cards from them. So this is what I was doing. I'd cut all of these out, cut all of the card backs out, and... You, I, 
I was probably going to speed up this bit anyway because I literally was just gluing things onto card but um, the video will resume in a second and it will you know we'll pick up from there I will leave the measurements um, that I've got in the description box but it would be wise to have a look at these pictures I think I'll leave them at the end so that you can see exactly which way I cut them okay so uh, yes I'll be back in a second but it looks like I've just carried on because the video cut out okay then ignore what I said about the video resuming it um, the memory card is obviously overloaded and it is not I've got 16 minutes of a freeze frame so uh, yeah so where were we I've done the mats on the car backs and then my ATCs I'd got and I'd got some pieces of Amazon packaging which were very very fractionally smaller I stuck those on and then when you pick them up and stick them onto the little mat because they're raised up a tiny amount it, it just it just looks better with that tiny gap there so you, I don't know you probably can't see but there is a tiny tiny slither of Amazon packaging between the um, ATC and the card back but uh, sadly I did show you all of this process but I've lost all that and I've I printed out some of these little um, best wishes cut them out and I've been around them with some spun sugar distress oxide because that's the only sort of pink I've, I've got and um, yeah that's it that's how I made the cards so we've got that one they're all very similar as you can see from the background and the um, die cut background but yeah it's an easy way to make if you've made loads of ATCs it's an easy way to um, just make them into cards and they're small enough they'd be fine to give away in happy mail or um, you know with the ATCs or whatever you like but um, you know I, I always need some little cards for, for giving things away I mean they're not that tiny fairly tiny but uh, I shall make some lovely envelopes either with patterned paper or I shall use um, Daphne's diary pages I tend to use a lot of those and then just cut them and make an envelope so yeah so that that's it that's how I did it I will leave the measurements to the um, the mat and the card size so if you wanted to make some to fit your ATCs and you could do you know do what you like um, I will leave those in the description box but I don't know if you can see that is the dimension so it's two and five eighths two and five eighths you're cutting at along the long side and then three and five eighths and three and five eighths and you'll get eight mats and then for the card back you want to cut along the long side at three and three quarters and three and three quarters and then cut along five and a half, five and a half, and you'll get four card backs there. Okay, folks, so have fun if you do that. Um, just thought it was a good way of using up or showing you how you can use up some ATCs if you'd batch made and you'd got loads of them and um, you know you were giving a few away, but you might want to make some cards. That was a quick and easy way of making some cards. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, have a lovely day or weekend, rest of the weekend. I probably won't upload this till Monday, so enjoy the rest of the week. And uh, I'll be back again soon. Thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, bye.